Good morning. Well, it is morning. You may not be when you um, go to watch this video at any time. Um, I suppose what I want to talk about is risk management. Um, mainly understood. Um, so I'm going to, and there is so much more, so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to do this in bite-sized chunks. So let's start with an overview of what risk management is. It's vital that in any on-road training situation, you're clear where the responsibility lies for the safety of everyone. That's you, your client, anybody else in the vehicle, and other road users. There are two aspects to the management of risk in any training situation. At all times, you are responsible for your safety. That's always a good one, I like that, yeah? The safety of the pupil and the safety of other road users. In particular circumstances, this can extend to you taking physical control of the vehicle to manage a safety critical instance. If you fail in this basic responsibility at any time, well, you're letting yourself down, your client down and all other road users. But if you were taking your part for your standards check, Quite simply, you fail. So it's important that you get this right. From a training point of view, you're also responsible for developing the pupil's awareness of their ability to manage risk as the driver. The client has responsibilities and it's important that you make this clear. So when you're being assessed about risk management, this is one of the things that you're being assessed about. So I'm going to try to do this in bite-sized chunks. This first one's quite large, but did the trainer ensure that the pupil fully understood how the responsibility for risk would be shared? I simply just call this job sharing, yeah? Um, in the first instance, you know, making sure that we divide up who's doing what between you and your client. The balance of responsibilities between the pupil and you will inevitably vary in different circumstances. So I'm going to give you two scenarios. Um, a, pupil in early, a pupil in the very early stages of their tra training in a car feed with dual controls. In this situation, it might be reasonable, and it's a might, listen to that word, for you to start a lesson by saying something like, at all times, I expect you to drive as carefully and responsibly as possible. I will expect you to be aware of other road users and to control the car. However, I do have the ability to take control of the car in an emergency. I will only use these controls when I feel that you're not dealing with the situation yourself. If that happens, we'll take some time to talk about what happened so that you understood for next time. So just a basic risk management statement. That doesn't mean they understood it. Just remember that. Just because you've made a statement doesn't mean you've ticked the box of risk management. Because I think this is where when people go and sit their standards check or their part three, they think that making a statement ticks the box. No, it's your starting point. The second one, you and I know that people like to take um, full license holders. So you might take a pupil or a client, ex-client has passed their driving test, but has asked you to give some additional training in their own car, which could be much bigger and more technically advanced than the one they learned in. Um, maybe, maybe not, but we'll, 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 we'll go with that nevertheless. So in this situation, you may say something like, so I'm not saying you say this, you may say something like, you have passed your test and I will therefore make the assumption that you are taking full responsibility for our safety. I will be talking you to you from time to time, but I will try to keep that a minimum so that I won't distract you. If I'm quiet, don't worry. That just means I'm comfortable with what you are doing. I will, of course, let you know if I see any risks that you appear to have missed. So these are just opening statements. These are not actually, you know, ticking all the boxes. This is your starting point. So, however, such opening statements are not all that is involved. 
So that's the point I want to make. You should be managing the process throughout the lesson. So, for example, if the pupil makes some sort of mistake carrying out, a, a, say, a manoeuvre, you should ideally find an opportunity to analyse that mistake with the pupil. Having achieved an understanding of what went wrong, you might then ask the pupil to try the manoeuvre again. At that point, you should provide the pupil with clear information about what is required of them. So, another example, you might say, Let's try that manoeuvre again. I won't say anything. Just try to remember what we've just been talking about. Then another one, I suppose. On the other hand, you may want to take back a bit of control and you might say, look, let's try that, that again. I will talk you through it this time. Just follow my instructions. You know, it's not the same, is it? So this is, we, we need to be flexible. You should work with the pupil to decide the best way of tackling the problem. And that might mean a temporary change. Listen to that word, temporary change in the balance of responsibility. The important thing is that pupil knows what is expected of them. So if you tell them what you expect, try to stick to it. You know, if you say that you're not going to say anything, that's so difficult, isn't it? Yeah. But if you say that, then you must try to stay, stay quiet unless there is a safety critical incident. I suppose look, if we come back to um, standards check or part three test conditions, there are no circumstances in which you can assume that the risk that the issue of risk management has been dealt with. Even if you and the pupil have had discussions about risk before the observed lesson, you must show that you are actively managing the issue for assessment processes or for, for assessment purposes. Um, so indications that you're doing good should include asking what the pupil, asking the pupil what is meant by risk, asking the pupil what sort of issues create risk, you know, such as alcohol or drugs, explaining clearly what is expected of the pupil and what the pupil can reasonably expect of you. And I say again, sticking to it. Yeah, checking the pupil understands what is required of them. When there is a change of plan or they are asked to repeat an exercise. So a few things that indicate that you're not quite getting it right include failing to address the issue of risk management, giving incorrect guidance about where responsibility lies for the management of risk, failing to explain how dual controls will be used. Yeah, will be used if you need to use them. You may be in a car without them. Undermining the pupil's commitment to being safe and responsible by, and I know you won't do this, but agreeing with risky attitudes or to, you know, well, one or two pints won't matter. Asking the pupil to repeat a manoeuvre or carry out a particular exercise without making sure that they understand what role you are going to play. And so the final point that I'm going to make, and I'll probably make this on every video I make about risk management, will be you're managing the risk so that the goal will be achieved, the learning outcome. We're still focusing on the learning outcome. So I'll leave you with that thought and um, have a wonderful day whenever you watch this. Thank you and goodbye.